Well, earlier I spoke to Ken Clark, one of the rebel Conservative MPs, and Jonathan Isaby, the editor of the Eurosceptic website Brexit Central. I started by asking Mr. Clark if being branded a traitor and a mutineer by the likes of the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph fired him up to be even more rebellious. I don't take any notice of it. I mean, it's just all rubbish. Uh, and I am I'm voting in accordance with what I believe to be the British interest. I'm voting in accordance with my own views. And as Edmund Burke once said, I uh, owed my constituents my judgment. I don't just take dictation from the Daily Mail, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, the, the, the whole ranting piece and the others, the Telegraph of rants and sort of things not long ago, there's not the faintest relationship to the content of the amendments we're talking about and the amendments I keep voting on. I voted against okay. the government several times already, and I will do so again, where, as the government well knows, some features of this bill don't fit with my idea of parliamentary democracy nor my idea of the interests of my children and grandchildren at okay. all. Jonathan Isby, hasn't the language of the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph backfired here by calling people like Ken Clark and others mutineers and traitors? and calling them for, for them to be deselected. I mean, that's just going over the top, isn't it? That's certainly not language that I've used. I don't think it's particularly helpful. But at the end of the day, what we have here is a lot of people voting against the British interest, effectively, because they are effectively undermining the Prime Minister, who is just today over in Europe uh, at the European Council about to embark on these important negotiations. Now, Ken is the last person on earth I would accuse of hypocrisy. He's been consistent on this. He was against the referendum. He was against triggering Article 50. He's voted against any attempt to get us out of the European Union throughout. He's been consistently wrong, but he's been consistent. My concern, I think, is with a lot of other people who have dressed up their rebellion last night in terms of parliamentary scrutiny and parliamentary accountability, when I think there is an agenda there actually to frustrate Brexit. There's nothing in this amendment that's not delivering the referendum result. I mean, I rejected the referendum. I think it's a silly way of approaching these complicated questions in the modern world. But I'm in a minority. I accept that. This amendment has nothing to do with whether we leave the European Union. It's how we handle the process of negotiating once it gets underway. We're not exchanging insults. We both have perfectly proper respect for each other's views. But it is a bit idle to slip out of arguing. You've got to explain why you think it should have nothing to do with Parliament, what the deal is. And it's a bit of a cop-out to say, oh, well, secretly what you're planning to do is reverse the referendum. Well, I, I don't think you read Twitter feeds, Ken, but those of us who do have seen a lot of big Remain supporters today being very excited about the fact that this was the first step, as they saw it, on the way to reversing Brexit. So that is a view being propagated by a lot of people on the continuity Remain side of things. But by the way, I'm not against Parliament having a final say. The government Good. is not against Parliament having a final say. Ken Clark, you're a passionate pro-European. You don't like Brexit. You don't like the way it's been handled. Right. Why don't you just come clean on this programme tonight and say what you really want is to stop Brexit, and this is an incremental move in that direction. My aim now is to minimise the damage. I don't think we are going to reverse Brexit. Of course I'd reverse Brexit if it was left to me, but I'm in a small minority in the House of well, Commons on that. Okay, well, but, but I don't want new tariffs, new regulatory barriers, new customs processes put between us and our largest single market in the world. We spent years, I was in the Thatcher government that helped put all this together and I got to keep as much as that if we can. We're going to be made poorer by yeah. Brexit, we have been already, but I want to minimise the damage it does whilst we work out how we're going to recover from this right. sometime in the future. Are you like Turkey's voting for Christmas in the sense that one accusation is that you are opening the door for Jeremy Corbyn to walk into number 10 if you carry on voting like this? I don't see the logic of that at all. Last night's vote didn't bring Jeremy Corbyn one step nearer to number 10. I know, again, the right-wing newspapers all shriek that. They find that's a substitute for arguing the merits of the amendment, because they've none of them got any serious arguments against the amendment. And again, it's, it's sort of the slightly dottier right-wing right people who can't actually handle the arguments, who start shrieking at you, you're putting Corbyn in number 10. It is a very, very elaborate process that moves from last night's vote to making it any okay. easier or less easy for Jeremy Corbyn to get there. Jonathan Isaby, if the European Parliament gets a final vote on the final deal, if 27 Euro European parliaments get that vote. Why on earth shouldn't the British Parliament vote on it too? Well, they will, and that's the point. The government have set out a number of ways in, in a which meaningful there will be way. Votes. No, no. Sorry? In a meaningful way. 
Well, how do you define meaningful? I mean, that, that's not a word that was in the amendment yes, yesterday. Let's ask you an, act an, act of, an act of parliament, a statute, the usual there way. Is, there is going to be a withdrawal agreement bill set down before parliament at the end of this process, which parliament will get to vote on. So there will be a vote. But by that time, it will have been settled. You want that before the agreement's done. Ken Clark, Jonathan Isabey, thanks very much for joining us.